Hey fellow woodworkers, we're going to make our seat today for the Maloof style rocking chair. And I choose to make a five board seat for four reasons. Basically, even if I have a one piece board, a, a nice one with beautiful grain in it, I cut it into five boards. Uh, number one is uh, so that I can carve out wood, uh, waste out wood with a, my bandsaw that I don't have to grind it out all the time. Number two is so that I can have a contoured seat like this one. So that the bottom of it is, uh, you can see the bottom where it's rounded and the front of it. I think aesthetically it's a prettier seat. Number one, we can waste out wood. Number two, uh, we have a more comfortable seat when it's finished because it's curved, it's rounded, aesthetically it's better. And uh, number four, when you put five boards together like this, either with dowels or biscuits, it's more sturdy. It's not subject to failure like a single seat might crack. Sometime in the future, they'll do that. So that we have a, a better seat. So, five boards. We want to, to make sure that boards one and five, the outside boards, are the same thickness and dimension. That's very important. Boards uh, two, three, and four, not necessary because we're going to waste it out anyway. What we do is take our, our pattern, which comes in the, uh, or a jig, which comes in the patterns that are available on my website and we draw out the contour of the seat. We flip it over and do the other side. I've already drawn this out as you can see the contour on there. Also on the one side we mark the location of the front and the back legs. Mark both sides. We take another pattern and what's over here and we mark the front of the seat. Now, uh, this is also available in the patterns or the, a jig. This, and we mark the front of the seat. You can cut the front of the seat out at any time before we do the tapering or afterwards. It doesn't make any difference. But before you glue any of the boards together, you want to do it. Now, supposing we've got the front cut out, then we take the boards, and I'll show you on the front here how I mark the boards. Number three board, the center board, we've got a V on two and three, a V on three and four, an upside down V on four and five. In other words, just opposite this one, upside down V on one and two. This is how we're going to taper the boards. We're going to take, I'll take number three board over to the planer. You can taper them using a planer. You can use a table saw, but you want to clean up the taper with a router bit because the table saw will leave some burn marks and some marks that you don't want because they'll show up when you put the seat together. You can use the bandsaw. If you have a bandsaw capable of doing it, to make the taper, then again, you have to use a router bit to clean it up, the jig. If you've got a, a planer, which is really the best way to do it, set it with a gauge at five degrees, lock it in place, get ready to plane it. But before you do, I suggest that you take a felt pin and you mark three marks on each edge of at least three, maybe more. The reason for this is because when you're playing, sometimes you, you're not always sure whether you got the whole board correct. With those marks on there and you run it through the planer, when those marks are gone, you know it's playing correctly. Okay, you do that to each one of the boards in turn and turn them so that 
of course you're planing the right angle and when you've done that and you clamp them all together this is what you get your seat your seat board will come together with a nice flush fit and you'll get that nice contour on the bottom now you unclamp your boards and then you're going to take uh, your templates that are available in your patterns and you're going to have two of them for the edge of your uh, seat boards one is for seat board number three and uh, it only has the one it'll be the center seat board and what you do is you lay it on the side of the board and where you mark the top you take this portion of it you line that up with the top now if you want a keel and a keel is this this, this portion of the seat that kind of comes up in the middle if you want that then on number three template you stop and you exit the board so you don't follow the contour all the way you turn it over and you make the same on the other side now you'll notice that uh, when you exit it that'll give you room to contour the uh, keel you take your board number two and you take your other template which is uh, for one and five four and two and you put it on and you start you start it where your seat and you put your template on there and then you lay it out you mark it up you have a line like that you turn it over now because your seats curving this location is different than this one so you put your template and you start it at the seat mark again and you lay out you notice this will extend beyond the front of your seat but that's okay now you mark each board You mark uh, one and five, two and four with this one, and number three with this one. Now what you do is come on over here to the bandsaw, if your bandsaw is capable. Some of you, uh, you can't bandsaw this high, but uh, if you can, I'll show you how to do it. When you cut this, uh, you're going to cut out this angle. And make sure that your saw is away from the bottom of the board you never want to be near the bottom of the board this is we're starting to cut the line that's closest to the end first because if we start at this one let's watch what happens if I start at cutting that one I'm going to cut out beyond our mark so you have to be very careful in what you do you line up you cut out this on the bandsaw making sure the bottom of the blade or the bottom of the board is away from the blade and you follow that contour what happens is this contour will give you the contour of the bottom of the seat when you're grinding and sanding the seat you never go below this you know where the bottom of the seat is now on this side you can cut this out but what you have to do is when you cut it is really turn it away from the blade and I mean get it away from the blade the bottom of the blade and then you can cut it out uh, what'll happen is it'll cut somewhere in here 
the other one will cut almost all the way and then you can grind out the, the difference in the two. Understand? See where the bottom of the uh, board is hitting the blade? You don't want that because if you start cutting to this line you're going to overcut in this area. So you bend your board into the blade and then follow the line and cut it. You do a couple of them, you ruin several boards and you won't do it anymore. Now you do each board as marked. As you've marked them, each one. And when you get them done, you'll have something like this. This one's been had some grinding on it, but nevertheless, this line, these two lines, these lines are the bottom of that saw mark, so that you know where to grind to, and you follow your contour around the back. The front has been shaped. You'll do each one of those. Now, if you decide to uh, to use dowels, you you. Your decision will be either to use dowels or biscuits, and I recommend definitely to use one or the other, dowels or biscuits. To put your uh, dowels in, you use a locator. Take, take a square, mark it about 5 eighths of an inch, and put a line on here all the way. That, that uh, so that when you drill the hole, uh, you've got a little material on the bottom and you've got plenty on the top. Now to locate your holes, I suggest you, you pick the fat part of the seat. You can see where the seat comes up. This is a good fat part of the seat right there. This is another good fat part of the seat. Closer to the middle. I wouldn't pick right here. Besides, you, uh, you want to pick this spot. Now the reason I pick this spot is uh, pretty important because what happens is uh, that your seat, the uh, back leg of your seat will be cut out something like this. You'll have a big cut in it like here and you don't want the dowel to be over in this area so that it comes out inside of this cut on the outside board like so. That'll be this board here. So put, pick a fat area in here that's outside of this area. Now you can hand drill these. Uh, if you put uh, drills in them, bits, uh, dowels in there, you can hand drill them. Or if you've got a biscuit maker, well, use your biscuit maker and put it in there. But because of the edge of the board is slanted, and, just eyeball it and put it in there. Now you're going to use a 13 millimeter drill, not a half inch, a 13, I'll tell you why. I buy dowels by the caseload and over time, I don't use them all at once obviously, and over time they kind of warp. They get bigger and they won't go in a half inch hole. And instead of going over to the grinder and working them down, shaving them off a little bit. I put a 13 millimeter hole in and they go in fine. The uh, epoxy that I use, and I use epoxy, System 3 T88. It's really good stuff. And it's a great filler. It'll, it's stronger than the wood when it's filled in. So it'll take up any gap in the dowel, if there is any, which there usually isn't very much at all. 